diving deep today into some really uh, remarkable physiological data. From Killian Jornet, it's fascinating stuff. Absolutely, pulled together by his team, including a doctor in biology and biomedicine who's really lived with this data. Practical takeaways about human limits. And maybe challenge some common ideas about endurance. Let's start with maybe the most startling thing, the people reflex data. After things like his Alpine Connections or UTMB 2022, extreme efforts. Right, and the data showed people were responses similar to well, patients with severe traumatic brain injuries. That sounds, frankly, quite alarming. It does. It really does sound alarming, but here's the crucial part, the nuance. Okay. It doesn't mean he had those injuries. It highlights his incredible physiological tolerance for that level of, let's say, neural impact. So he's experiencing this massive neurological fatigue signal. Exactly, but he's still navigating technical terrain, processing info, making complex decisions. His fitness seems to provide this buffer, this resilience against just, well, shutting down. Wow, so adaptation allows for tolerating states that look like severe injury on paper. Oh. Amazing. Huh. Okay, let's shift gears. Metabolism. Ah, yes, the fuel. For ages, it's been carbs, carbs, carbs for endurance, right? But Killian's UTMB data kind of flips that. It really does. The analysis showed his lipid metabolism burning fat wasn't just helping. It was genuinely key to his performance, especially late in the race. And didn't his triglycerides and cholesterol increase? That seems counterintuitive. It does, but in his case, it likely means his body was super efficient at pulling fats out of storage and using them. He wasn't running out of fat fuel, he was mobilizing more. So forcing carbs might not work for everyone. Could even hurt someone like him. Precisely. It points strongly towards metabolic individualization. If you're genetically good at burning fat, too many carbs might cause gut problems, maybe even slow you down. Which explains why he does a lot of training fasted, right? To boost that fat burning engine. Exactly. It's a deliberate training strategy for him. Okay, this next one is maybe even more surprising. Gut bacteria. How do they play into this? Nah, it's pretty wild. He has a high amount of specific bacteria linked perhaps to his plant-based diet that actually consume lactic acid. Oh, consume it in the gut. Yes, lactate diffuses from the blood into the gut and these bacteria essentially gobble it up. And what do they do with it? They recycle it, they produce short chain fatty acids like butyrate, and these aren't wastes. They can actually be used by the body as energy precursors, feeding back into fuel production. So his gut is literally helping manage fatigue and providing extra fuel. You got it. It's part of this incredible metabolic flexibility he has. It helps explain those really high lactate numbers we see sometimes. Like after schema, nearly 10 millimol or even 13, 14 after UTMB. The levels that would sideline most people, but for him, with the gut bacteria recycling and his muscle fibers efficiently clearing it, it's less of a limiter. His body is just uh, extremely good at handling lactate. It's amazing how these systems are all connected. Does fat play a role in recovery too? It seems to. The thinking is that fats post-exercise can be less inflammatory than huge carb loads and maybe easier on the gut and immune system when it's stressed. Any chance we non-elite folks will get access to tech like pupillometry for fatigue soon? Well, the research is moving. There's talk of maybe phone apps down the line for basic fatigue tracking via the eye. Still very early days though. But the potential is there. And interestingly, his team thinks he still has room to grow based on this data. They see potential for more progression, more big challenges in the coming years. He's not done yet. Okay, so wrapping this up, what are the big takeaways for you, for the listener? For me, it's gotta be. Understand your individual response. Don't just follow generic rules. And well, don't underestimate the hidden players, like your gut microbiome. Right, and the sheer power of adaptation. High-level training builds this incredible resilience. It really challenges that old no pain, no gain idea. It's more about intelligent, individualized stress and recovery. It's about personalized performance, moving beyond the one-size-fits-all approach. So here's something to think about. How much potential might you unlock if you stop just following general advice and started trying to understand your unique biology, your own metabolism, your recovery signals? How much performance might be waiting inside you if you just listen differently?